Oh, no, there was a look at, I suppose, from a spectator point of view, it would have been for our fans and people that were here, it would have been a, a classic game of football to enjoy if you were. You weren't wanting a Port Adelaide win at the end of the day, but um, you know, we certainly were. And our start, you know, they they got away. They, you know, to their credit, they took their opportunities early because we had a pretty strong first quarter. Uh, albeit we we missed, they kicked straight. You know, it's almost the, the reverse of an earlier one. The look around clearances. Yep. Yeah. No. They're two. They're two inside mids. You know, they get 26 clearances between two players, that's a significant performance. You know, and it's it's you know it's hard to say any more than that than to say that they were too strong and too clean and tight for us today. So when you see those numbers coming up as red flags on your screen, how did you work through what you could do? Yeah we tried lots we tried lots of things to try and uh, to stem some of their damage that they were able to do. And it wasn't so much scoreboard damage, they were just getting it their way. You know we talked at the start of the game because we know that's what Adelaide would have been talking about too, is that it was a territory game and you know when you uh, you know, you lose uh, first possession, I think 36 to 66 or something it was. It's 30. 30, you, you, that, that gives them a chance to put the ball where they want more often than us. And then when you do get first possession and you turn it over as you did, is that another story about the day for you? Oh no, yeah, well, games are like that. I reckon there's a there's always. I mean, if, you, if you look through there, they would have had similar situations where they've given the ball back, but they you know they made us pay. That's I think that's the crucial part. They made us pay on turnover, and they were able to turn them into goals. And, you know, I think they kicked 18 goals from 50 entries, and you know we know last time with the 70 entries they, they weren't able to do that. So that was the price that we paid on turnover. But you're always going to pay a price. Today was a significant price because some of our turnovers you actually can't defend them because you're, you're entitled to be going the other direction. Yeah. Oh no, we just got to. We do. We have to keep on winning. That's our. That's our ingredient. We have to keep playing that way. We have to keep learning. We have to keep improving from each performance. You now we've played in two big games in the last two weeks, where there've been three-point games, one, one, lost one. We're not a long way, long way away from in, in form, but we're not. We're not consistent, and that, that's been the message all year. We've got you know some more games that we've got in front of us now, and as I said before this game. We've got games and opportunities to develop and improve and keep chasing the goal for us, and that's what we'll keep doing. Do you need more from more players more often? Yeah, yes, more consistently. I think we've been able to get it again. I keep saying this within games, we've been able to do things well at times, but it's just not consistent. That's, that, look, the boys, the message from the boys, which we've just spoken, is it the same thing? You know, we're, we're still chasing our first real four-quarter performance, and it's I don't know what round it is, 16 or 17, and. We still haven't been able to deliver a four-quarter performance just yet. You know, we've we've played halves and quarters and little bits more than that, but we haven't delivered a four-quarter performance, and that's that's the disappointing part. Is there an answer to when you ask yourselves that question? Oh, I think the answer is, uh, as for us, is that we're just not able to complete the game style that we want to play regularly. We we break away from it at the wrong time, and you know, we we're not predictable to each other. And when you're not predictable to each other, that's when it breaks. So you're saying it's what you do away from your game plan. Yeah, I think if you looked at today's opportunities, you'll see a number of opportunities where we probably should be doing very simple, basic fundamentals. I called it fundamentals today in the box. I said the fundamentals of our game are were hurting us today, and, and you know they're things that you expect for us as a group. You know, we should take ownership of that that we should be able to be better at. Remember when the first showdown and they were bleeding at the back, and then this time they lose Darwin. Wouldn't you took advantage of that issue this as much as you could this time? Well, we. We try to, yeah. We certainly went after trying, trying to get that, but we we understand that you know we've seen sides this year defend without key backs, and you know we let's not forget that we were we were doing something similar down the other end. You know we, we weren't able to defend without our key backs as well as they were, so uh, that was um, that was just the way they they were able to do it. And we tried to you know we tried that, but again, if you go back to the clearance, and it's going in the wrong direction too often, it's a long way to get it to the other end, and that gives time in defence. If you give teams time, they'll get numbers back, as we would. I think Paddy's been building reasonably well for us, and you know he's had lots of interruptions through this year, and we know there's some there's some significant ups. I said that I think a week or two ago that there's lots to like about Paddy Ryder being at our footy club. He's not the only one having interruptions throughout the throughout the year. We have plenty of players. Is that you talk about consistency? It's really hard to build that consistency when you have so many key players that just have little interruptions. 
Oh, no. No, you can use that as an excuse. We won't, we won't use excuses. We'll just, we'll just go that we have to be able to cover for those sorts of things that happen. It's a footy season. There's not a club in the competition that doesn't have little interruptions. We haven't covered for it the way a good side would. Yeah, no, I think that's what, what's, what's happening, Harry. We've gone from knowing exactly we're going to do this to, to being a little bit second-guessing. And that, that happens when you, your form's not quite where it is. And, and once you start in that, you get into that mode a little bit more, it becomes a little bit more of a guess. And that's when it breaks, you know. That's what, and we've, we've done that, you know, this year a bit. There's a lot of debate about how important hit-outs are sometimes, but did you feel as though that Sam Jacobs was first hit-outs were dominant giving his players a very well, when you look at the collective, yeah, you have to say yes because he, he gave it to Dangerfield and, and Thompson and they were able to make the most of it. So there's a, there's a combination of both, isn't it? It's not just the hit out. You've got to have a willingness to compete at ground level, which those two blokes were able to do. And, but collectively, that was the difference. Their, their midfield stuff was the difference. Did you, did you mention the Walsh or how did you... No, no, not today, I didn't, no. No, I don't think... I mean, today was, uh, you know, was about trying to play the footy that we wanted to play. And I said, right... You know, and, and I'm sure Scott would have said this. Once the balls bounced, it was going to be a pretty solid game of football. It was a showdown, and we we're, were absolutely up for the battle. And you know, Adelaide were up for the battle too, which is great credit to them. Can when you get a reaction like the crowd did at the end of that game, it might be worth asking this question: Were you bewildered by the third team on the back today, like the crowd was? Next question, please. <laughs> Do you feel like you almost should have won the game in that last? No, quarter? no, I didn't feel like we should have won the game. I feel like we. We would have used the word pinch. I reckon if we had won the game, I think we would have used the word pinch. I would have been happy to take the pinch, but I felt like it would have been, it would have been pinch because they were able to answer at crucial moments and get establish the, the, their lead again. Because probably three or four times through the game, we got back to challenging points and we just couldn't completely go the, the rest of the way. And you know, to their credit, they held on like like the week before. We held on. Usually, usually the game works out pretty fair by then. Yeah, no, all good. No problems at all. I think there's no one that at all. We just subbed Arch out. He wasn't getting much of an influence in the game. And outside that, I think we've pulled up really well. Can we've had so much debate in the past week about the look of the game. Does that respond to the critics who say the game's in a bad place? If I wasn't sitting in the coaching seat of Port Adelaide, I'd say there... And I said that. There wouldn't be too many people who have said the game's in bad shape if you watch today's game of football, I think. Un unemotionally. And unfortunately, I'm emotional about the game because I'm connected. But I think if I... I think Phil, you know himself, look after the look of the game sometimes. And, and today, as a, spectac a spectacle, I think we looked after the game as well. And as I said, I'm a, an emotional and disappointed coach who lost the game by three points. But the game itself was probably a pretty fair game. Thanks,